Hi friends! I'm making a classic Caesar salad. I tease that this is my famous Caesar salad because I make it a lot whenever I go to people's homes who are having a potluck or who want me to do a dish. I often will say, hey, I'm happy to bring my Caesar salad. I'll get Roger to bring over my big fat fun bowl that you might be able to find at Salvation Armies for people, you know, at um, thrift stores, people that are getting rid of them because they do take up some space, but I love using mine and I just went recently to, um, hi Sandra, to Roger's aunt's house and I brought my whole big fat salad bowl. It's it's on a stand and it was just kind of fun because I was able to prepare the salad for the whole family at the table. So the thing is that when I was 18 years old, I went to work, thanks honey, I went to work for a fancy dancy um, golf and country club. I was working there in the, in the winter time and I was terrified of my manager because she was this amazing British woman who was just very serious and hardcore. And she really helped me to step outside my comfort zone because in the first shift, she told me that I would be watching how to make a table side homemade classic Caesar salad and that I would then be required to make it the next night for guests who ordered them. And I quickly learned that pretty much every single table ordered a homemade Caesar salad and it was terrifying. And I remember just watching the server whip it all together and me thinking, I am never gonna be able to do this. How in the heck am I gonna be able to do this? But anyway, of course, I learned very quickly, throwing people into the fire is sometimes a good thing. And I learned to make this salad table side. So I made it for many, many, many guests and I never had anyone turn it away or say it was terrible. And from then I just continued to keep making them because the dressings that you can buy, the Caesar salad dressing in the grocery store, they're filled with tons of chemicals that we don't wanna put in our body, tons of sodium, tons of saturated fat, and stuff that we just don't want. And they don't taste nearly as good as the real deal. And once you learn how to make a classic Caesar, you'll never buy that dressing again. It's garbage, it doesn't even compare taste-wise, and you'll just love being able to have this as a little uh, tool in your toolbox. So I asked Roger to show me, to show you this, just because I think it's so fun. So it's this humongous bowl that sits on a, on a tripod stand and it's just super, super big, and it's just fun to be able to make salads table side. So I bought that years ago at Costco for pretty cheap. I don't remember the price, but I'm just thinking that I bet there might be some of those floating around at thrift stores because people might not wanna make Caesar salad and they might be getting rid of them. So look around for those if you wanna start making classic Caesar salad yourself. So here's what you're gonna need, and I know we're limited huh, with Facebook Live, right? I'm not able to, do everything I wanna do. So I put everything on a tray just to show you right out of the gate the ingredients that we're gonna need. And anyone who wants this recipe, email me, or sorry, PM me here on Facebook with your email address and I will email you the recipe as soon as we're done here. So on my tray, I've got some Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce, I've got some hot sauce, any kind will do, any kind you like. I usually use Frank's hot sauce, but I also like this brand that I have, and there are loads. Just choose any one that you like. And those ingredients are optional. If you're not a fan of Worcestershire or hot sauce, you don't have to add them. Wrapped up in the paper towel, I've got my romaine hearts. I really like the hearts of romaine. I also will encourage you, you can use radicchio, endive, you can use Boston lettuce, you can use any kind of lettuce that you like. Um, they all work. And then I think it's just easier if I don't hold this. And then I have coddled my egg. And I explain why in the recipe, but I'll share now. So we need to be concerned about foodborne illnesses. I do tend to buy my, my eggs fresh at the farm. They're pastured eggs or pastured chickens. And so I go right there. They've been collected that morning and I sometimes skip the step of coddling the egg. I wouldn't recommend skipping the step if you're dealing with pregnant women, with women who are breastfeeding, or the elderly. And really, it's just a safe practice. So I teach you how to coddle the egg in the recipe. Essentially, you're gonna take a small pot, put it on a stove, high heat, you're gonna bring it to the boil, about three cups of water, just enough to cover your egg. You're gonna gently drop your egg into the water and time it, seriously time it, one minute, not a second longer. One minute, it sits there as you've turned the heat off and it just sits there in the hot boil, you know, the, the water that had been boiling, sits there for one minute exactly. 
Remove it from the heat immediately after one minute, plunge it into a water bath of ice and water, cool it right down, and then it turns into a coddled egg. Once you crack it open, so you're putting the egg in its shell in the pot of water, then when it comes, when it's cool enough to work with, you're gonna crack it and you're gonna separate the yolk from the white and you're going to just be left with the yolk that's now killed off the bacteria that might have been there. So it's just a safe practice. A tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice, a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I like the Mai brand, but you can, like M A I L L E, but you can choose any mustard that you like, really. Um, we're gonna be using two different kinds of oil. I love olive oil, extra virgin, cold pressed. You know, olive oil is the best. I love it. All those polyphenols, it's amazing. Great for the skin. It's also a little heavy, and it's also flavorful, of course, with that amazing olive flavor, but it can sometimes overpower the other ingredients in this recipe. So I'm only using two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and then I'm using a quarter of a cup of avocado oil. You could also use grapeseed oil or another vegetable oil that you like, but something really mild in flavor is what we're looking for there. And then this, and you cannot skip this ingredient unless you're vegan and you want to make this, but if you're vegan, you're not going to use the egg. So unless you're vegetarian and you refuse to eat fish, you are not going to skip anchovies. They make this recipe. Please, please, please. If you've ever gone to a good restaurant for a good Caesar salad, you've eaten anchovies. Every single good restaurant that serves a delicious Caesar salad, like a real one, uses anchovies in the, in the dressing. It changes the game. It is amazing. And I know they look kind of yucky and I know that they're kind of creepy. And I'll show you, they come in a can. I put them in my container after. And they look like this. Can you see that? So yeah, they're little fishies, whatever. What's wrong with fish? Nothing's wrong with fish. They're amazing. They add the most earthy, meaty, umami flavor that changes this recipe. If you don't use them, you're really missing out. You're really going to notice a difference. You can also just use anchovy paste if you don't want to chop up the real anchovies. Then what we're going to use is real deal Parmigiana Reggiano. Re, Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, the real, my Italian friends are just like, oh my gosh, you just totally bastardized that. Um, the real deal you want real Parmesan cheese, the real deal. It can only be called Parmigiano Reggiano if it comes from the region of Parma in Italy, and it is amazing. There's nothing added to it. It's simply milk, and then they add salt to it, and it's cured for two years, and it, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like the flavor of real Parmesan. If you don't want to spend the money or buy real Parmesan, that's okay. Maybe splurge when you're having company, but regular time have something else. But please don't buy the plastic container that has the cheese in it. It's, it's awful. It really doesn't taste good. It's nothing like Parmesan. And um, you could use Grano Padano. That's a, a less expensive version, a type of a Parmesan cheese. It's just not the real Parmigiano Reggiano. And then what I love to use, instead of bacon, I'm not a fan of bacon. It's really high in saturated fat, really high in calories, really high in sodium, and uh, just really not great. And my whole house smells like bacon for two months afterwards, and it makes me crazy. I'm what's called a super smeller. I'm somebody who smells everything. <laughs> So smells are very strong to me and bacon lingers, as all of us know, for hours and sometimes days and I just can't stand it. Quick tip, if you really have to make bacon or if there's some reason why you absolutely have to make it, bake it in the oven. Never, never, never make your bacon on the stove. It splatters everywhere, it curls up, it's awful. All the restaurants lay it out on a parchment lined baking sheet and bake it in the oven. That's how to bake bacon but I don't want you using bacon. I just don't like it as an ingredient, really, once in a while, of course. But um, a really nice alternative to bacon is prosciutto, and or my Italian friends call it prosciutto. And so what you can do is we're gonna make um, strips of prosciutto, make them into like a little rosette, place them on a baking sheet, throw them in the oven at 375 for 10 minutes, 
done. And then each salad just gets one little rosette. I mean, for two slices of prosciutto, we're looking at about 690 milligrams of sodium. So it's not like it's low in salt, but what's nice is we're only using one strip and it's a lot lower than bacon. And again, we're not having all of that extra fat. So you'll notice when you bake the, um, the prosciutto, there's no grease at all on your pan. It's dry. Prosciutto is a dry cured ham and um and it's it's usually served raw i don't really like the taste of it raw i know my italian friends will say what blasphemy how can you say that i just don't really so that's just me but when i roast it this way it it sort of has a bacon like taste very close to bacon and but milder and just delicious and really tasty i also like it wrapped in asparagus um, the other thing that we're gonna do is make our own croutons. You don't have, you can skip this step. You can skip the bacon. You can totally make this vegetarian if you wanna skip the anchovies. Ah, it'll kill me. Um, we can't do it vegan though. There are too many <laughs> variables. But um, you can also skip the croutons. If you really don't wanna do bread at all, I totally understand. Or you can find a really nice gluten-free bread that you like and you can make them out of that if you're celiac or gluten intolerant. Or what I really love is anywhere that's local to you, that if you have a baker that does a really nice organic, um, yeast-free sourdough bread, and we're lucky here on Vancouver Island, we have this place called Wild Culture, and it's like Little Stream Bakery in Ottawa for my Ottawa friends. Oh my gosh, I miss Little Stream so much, but luckily we've got a lovely baker here on the island that does a similar product. And so I use just two slices of this bread and then I'm gonna teach you in the recipe. I won't do, I'm not doing it today, but on the stove, you're just gonna melt some butter or oil. You're gonna add a clove of garlic, let that get fragrant, toss in your cubed bread, stir it around, and then you're gonna throw it on a baking sheet at 375, same temperature as the prosciutto, and for 10 minutes. And you're just gonna toast up your croutons. So those are the first kind of steps. You're toasting up your croutons, you can go ahead and get your prosciutto ready, and then you just set that stuff aside, because that's for the end. Next up, what we'll do, I love, 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 love using a mug to make my dressings. I make all of my dressings in a mug. Why? Because literally I can hold on and whisk and I'm not fighting with the bowl moving around, which you're gonna see me doing, making this for you today. So I love that, the control that I have with a mug. But because you won't really be able to see the mug, I'm gonna just set that aside. I don't think I'll do it that way today. I'm also not going to be making the dressing in the bowl and then tossing my lettuce in, tossing it up and serving it because here on the island, it's only 10, 23 in the morning and I still haven't finished digesting my breakfast yet. I'm not ready to eat a Caesar salad, so I'll make one and throw it in the fridge. I don't care, I'll eat it soggy later, but I'm gonna do the rest, I'm gonna save my dressing for a little bit later. So I'm just gonna be playing that I'm making my salad right away, but I'm not. So I'm not gonna be making the dressing in the bowl to then add the, add the salad. I'll be doing it a little bit differently and I haven't quite figured out what I'm gonna do. That's the magic of live Facebook. All right, so let's get started. So first off, we're gonna take our coddled egg and we're gonna dump that into the bowl. So again, you can, you can feel free to do yours in a bowl as opposed to the mug, but I just think that the mug makes it really, really easy. We'll get rid of that. And then I'm gonna be continuing to make a bit of a paste out of my anchovies but first we're gonna go ahead and toss in our Dijon mustard, so a teaspoon of Dijon. I love Dijon mustard. I make all of my own dressings, to be honest with you. I really never, ever, ever, anyone who knows me knows that I do not bother with store-bought dressings. Like why? They're so easy to make. You can make lots. Certainly if you're using a, um, a coddled egg or a raw egg, you're not gonna keep it for more than four days in the fridge. But all of my other dressings with lemon and, and olive oil and you know with the apple cider vinegar, balsamic vinegar, garlic, like all of those, I have those in the fridge for a week or two, for sure. Couple of drops of Lee and Perrins if you like Worcestershire sauce. Again, speaking of that umami, it really gives it that nice flavor. Couple of drops of your hot sauce. I like it a little hot, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. I forgot to mention, of course, we're adding garlic and you can decide however much garlic you want to use. We're going to dump in our lemon juice. That was a tablespoon of lemon juice. 
And I'm just gonna make one small-ish, ish. I know, I'm thinking, is that enough? I'm gonna just put one small-ish clove of garlic in because I, I have things to do this afternoon and I don't wanna stink too much like garlic and garlic really stays with me. And this garlic press is the best one in the world. I am an expert because I've bought and thrown away too many to count. This is from Ikea and they're like six bucks. We've given many as gifts <laughs> because everyone says, oh my gosh, that thing's amazing. And look at how it just totally, you know, pulverizes the uh, garlic. And then what you're left with, I don't know, can you see that? Just comes right out. Like you put it in the skin and everything and then you're done, it's amazing. So I'll just throw that out. And now we're gonna keep moving on with our anchovy paste. I don't know if you can see me. Can you see this? Hey Roger, are you watching my live? Can you see me making this paste? <laughs> Roger goes, enough. <laughs> like, good enough. <laughs> okay, so I'm just basically taking, I do it this way. I'm sure there are a million better ways. Chefs out there are probably dying watching how I do it. But I take a fork and then I'm taking my knife and I'm just sort of chopping. I already kind of chopped them before we got started. And then I'm just kind of taking my knife and I'm not letting my knife leave the cutting board. I'm just in a like a lever situation. Roger, I don't think they can see me. Are you I'm, sure? I'm watching you do your knife work and cutting it. Looks good. <laughs> can you see it? <laughs> because I can see people who are watching, all I can see is so-and-so is watching, so-and-so is watching, so I can't see what I'm doing. Anyway, hopefully this is giving you an idea. So you don't have to you know, get it into the paste like you would get when you buy it as a paste. Um, you can mix, you can really just keep kind of mashing it that way. And then once it's pretty close, I think that's perfect. I like, I don't, I like to have a little bit of texture with it. And so that just to know that was four anchovies that I chopped up and those are going right in and they are amazing. Don't skip that step. I promise you, you will regret it if you do. So I'm just going to get started with what I have. Can you see that in my bowl? I'm just going to take a fork the way they taught me at that fancy golf and country club. And for anyone from Kitchener Waterloo, it was the Westmount golf and country club. Oh my gosh, so if you know it, you know how fancy that place was. Um, they taught me to do this with a spoon and a fork together and it's like it creates this crazy chopstick-like apparatus movement and it was just too hard for me to do. <laughs> it was really tricky, so I'm not doing it today. So then what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna start actually with my olive oil. So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna eyeball it, but it's about two tablespoons. So I'm just gonna start whisking it in slowly. Slow and steady is the key when it comes to emulsifying olive oil with the acid of the lemon juice. You really want it to come together nicely. You don't want it to what's called break, which is when it just seems super like oily kind of sitting on the top and yucky and it isn't all combined nicely. So you can see I'm just going super slow. We can do a little bit of a stream. You gotta work quick and you gotta be ready for an arm workout. You might sweat a little. <laughs> That's okay. Then we've earned our lunch. How's the weather in Ottawa today? Anyone watching from Ottawa? I hear it's cold, cold, cold. What are we doing out here today? We're a little bit sunny, a little bit cloudy, and pretty mild. That's the nice thing about living on the island. Anyone that wants to come and visit me, you know my door is always open. So keep going. So like I say, about two tablespoons of olive oil. That might be about close. And you can see it's starting to come together already. And then we're gonna go in with our quarter cup of avocado oil. Same, con same concept where we're just really going nice and slow and steady to really get that emulsified. So who have I got with me? A few people. Hi, Shakar. Hi, Roger. Hi, Roxanne. Hi, Shelby. Hi, Elizabeth. So we're gonna keep going. And so you're gonna get a really good idea when you start to see it coming together if you like the consistency and you can give it a taste test. As you go along, give it a little taste, see what you think. 
That's the nice thing about cooking from scratch, right? It's all about your taste preferences. So just keep going. I'm telling you, it's an arm workout. I think that's almost enough. So you can see it's lightened up in color. I think I need a little more. And it's thickened up really nicely. And that's what you want. You want it to be nice and thick. You want it to be glossy, but not oily. You don't want to see the oil in, in blobs on the top. So you want, if you're seeing that at all, keep going really quickly with your whisk or your fork. I like a fork. You're welcome to use a whisk. It might be a little easier for first timers with a metal whisk. So like I said before, I'm going to be storing this for later. So what I'll do is I'll show you how I would plate it. If I, so if I were to be serving this to a group of four people for four size salads, that's what this is going to do, four nice size uh, salads, you'd use probably two or three or one large head of romaine. And I don't like using those like really bright outer leaves. They're a little bit, they're not as tender, they're not as delicate, they're not as sweet. So I would recommend doing, you know, getting in a little bit and just using the interior ones. But what I love to buy, we have it really accessible where I live, are the organic um, he uh, hearts, just the, the hearts of the romaine. Really nice. You can buy them pretty much anywhere. And so here's an option. You can always just take your leaves, I do this sometimes, and you can just design them nicely on your plate. You know, this is not the best plate to be using to show this format, but so you can just kind of design them nicely, drizzle some dressing on top, put your croutons and your bacon and your Parmesan cheese, and then it's just kind of like people can eat with their fingers. Kind of fun, kind of different, but what we're gonna do is we're going to actually cut them, uh, break them into bite-sized pieces. So I'm just gonna do this right into the bowl. As I said, into, the, into my serving bowl, I wouldn't normally do this. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do, <laughs> Roger just laughed at me. I'm going to, I'm going to do it in a different bowl so you can see how we would toss it together and then I'll plate it. So I'm gonna grab a, just a spoon and I'm gonna just take some of, this, of the dressing just to dress this and so you're gonna really kind of decide how much dressing you want. I would almost recommend for your first time, if you have never made your own Caesar before, don't just dump all your lettuce into the bowl and toss it. It might be too soggy. You might not like it, or you might have added too much um, lettuce and then you don't have enough dressing and it's not, and it's kind of dry. So you don't want that. But if you've done it many times like I have, you can kind of have a good read. And then what I want you to do is here's where you're gonna go in with your shaved Parmigiano, Parmigiano Reggiano. So I love this type of handheld grater because I can make a piece of $9 Parmesan last me forever. It stores really nicely in the fridge. Hard cheeses are good that way. And honestly, because it, it just, can you see what I'm doing? It just grates it so finely that like just a little bit goes a long way. And so we're gonna toss that together as well. We could have also added the Parmesan right into our dressing. And an ingredient that I totally forgot, I'm so sorry, freshly ground black pepper. I'm gonna put that right into my dressing and then I'll have to put some into here too. So that goes in the dressing. Don't worry, at least I have everything properly in the, if you email me for this recipe. I won't forget anything that there. So then we're just gonna go ahead and mix all of that in. And then we're gonna go ahead and plate it. And then, this is where we're gonna top it with our croutons, just a couple. So they've got a little bit of garlic on them, a little bit of salt on them. So I'm not saying that this is a low sodium meal, that's for sure, but um, we get 2,000 milligrams a day. I mean, we're not going too high here. Um, maybe a thousand, so, so just watch whatever you're having for the rest of the day. And then you're gonna top it with your little, um, little piece of prosciutto on the, on the top, like a little rosette, and feel free to put a lemon wedge on the side if you like people to squeeze freshly uh, squeezed lemon. And then I also like to 
go ahead and add a little bit more Parmesan on the top. And I love black pepper, so I always offer at the table if people want extra pepper on their Caesar salad. And there it is, there you have it, a homemade classic Caesar salad. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen. And again, anybody who wants this recipe, just PM me here on Facebook with your email address and I'll send it right away and I'll also be sharing it on my blog next week. Love you, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. See you soon. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen. Let me see if there's anything I need to answer. Did anyone ask me any questions? Good afternoon, beautiful to you too. Christine takes one to no one. Uh, hi Jennifer, hi Roger, hi Lori, hi Liz, hi Davina, hi Mavis. It tastes so much better using the actual anchovies, says Roger. Yes, it does. And Roger knows what a fan of anchovies I am. Hi Annette, hi Linda, how are you? Mwah. I love you so much. Lynn, hi, how are you? Solange, nice to see you. Joanne, hi honey. Hi Elizabeth, hi Shelby, hi Roxanne, Roger again. Hi Shakar, hey, hey, what's up? Caesar salads, what's up Shakar? I hope you make it. Hi Purette, nice to see you. This won't be on your vegetarian menu, but you can always take out the, the um, um, I want to say pancetta, because Roger kept calling it pancetta. Prosciutto, you can get rid of that, and then it becomes, other than the anchovies, it becomes vegetarian, so you might want to try it. Hi Drew, how are you? You are such an inspiration because you've always been cooking from scratch the whole time I've known you. Hi Greg, hi Tanai. Oh, I don't think I've met you yet. Hi Tanai. Anyway, thanks everybody for being here. Love you. Bye.